CSX 2000, when you look at it, the car started really a revolution when it came to performance, not only in America, but really all over the world. Because Carroll took an idea. He took an idea of having a neat little sports car and putting a small American V8 in it. And it was very manageable. That car handled well, it wasn't too front end heavy, had a good weight distribution, had tremendous performance. It evolved as the cars raced, won more races, they got a reputation, they became legendary and they've remained legendary. My name is Jim King. I'm the company historian, Shelby America. The focus in sports car racing was General Motors, specifically Corvette. Ford Motor Company didn't have a car comparable, and for Ford to invest in a car comparable to take on Corvette in racing would have cost a fortune. But Carroll Shelby came to Ford, came to Lee, he came with credentials. He came with a brilliant racing career in the decade of the 50s. He had won the 24 Hours of Le Mans as a driver. When he went to Lee and started to share what he wanted to do, and Iacocca, smart enough to realize if we're going to take on Corvette in total performance racing, we got a vehicle here with a little 289 cubic inch that was very fast, and as Carroll said, put the Corvettes in the weeds. And that's what it did. And from Ford's perspective, it was a home run. Well, his phone rang off the hook because all the car magazines there wanted to road test it. So the first magazine they ended up getting it was Sports Car Graphic. And when he shipped it out to him, they took it, road tested it. And when they sent it back to him, the car gets painted a different color. Then the next magazine that got it was Road and Track. They did the road test, shipped it back to him, and the car gets painted again a different color. So it went about four or five other times to all the different magazines that were around. And every time they did a road test, finished it, sent it back to them, it got a new paint job, each time a different color. It was yellow, red, blue, white. The way he phrased it one time, whatever was going to look good on a magazine cover. And everybody in the world really thought Carroll Shelby had six Cobras. He didn't, he only had one. It had a flowing body, very smooth, lots of neat curves in it, very appealing, very good looking. Four wheel independent suspension, wire wheels. Had all the neat ingredients that you wanted in a sports car in that era. So that's why the car was so appealing to him. And if he could get that V8 to fit in there, which was part of his dream, that would be the icing on the cake. And the V8 fit. The car was an instantaneous success. Everybody wanted to have one. It's got that iconic shape, iconic style. You look at it, it oozes performance. When you look at what I call the real McCoy of a Cobra, there's the real McCoy right there. Every knockoff in the world has taken this car as its mark, really. The initial badging was unique to the car. And in this badging that you see here, you'll see a little round circle in the center that says AC. And as the chassis morphed over time, AC disappeared out of the name. Many, many years ago, Carroll made a statement. He said, if anybody in the Shelby American team ever upgrades the upholstery in this car, they're gonna look for a new job the next morning. So in 54 years, nobody has dared touch it. And it is the way it was. That is really part of the aura of CSX 2000. It is as original as you can get it.